tuned for The Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled is actress Nancy Gibbs and artist Pixie Herms. Writer, performer, artist, director, Nancy Gibbs was born in Chicago. She came to the sunny West Coast and attended UCLA, but her path to graduation was interrupted by TV. What happened? Well, I went to UCLA because I wanted to be in the LA area because I wanted to work in television and um, Thankfully, uh, I was interrupted by what I wanted to do. <laughs> did it continue? Did you it continue did. to get work in it, TV? It did. It did for a certain time. And then I was kind of not ready. I was still too young to face the L.A. scene. Um, and, you did uh, Port Charles? I did. That was after. Oh, that it was, was after? Yes, oh, okay. That so was what happened in between? Adult. In between, I went back to Northern California where I was raised and just kind of cultivated my... Um, I, I grew up. I Did grew you? up, yeah, I matured, and then came back down to L.A. when I was more ready. You weren't doing stage or? Oh, oh yes, I did a oh, lot of stage were. up north, absolutely. Oh, you did? Yeah, a lot of regional theater, and I've done musical theater my whole life. So are you a singer? Basically. I sing also, yes. And dance? And dance, and, and act, S primarily singing and acting now. I guess, because you did Fiddler on the Roof. Yes, I was Golda. And, and. I was Golda. And. Which was very funny because. What did she say? <laughs> she I says, love her voice. of course, right. <laughs> Do I what? <laughs> That's what she said. That's so perfect. Yeah. So it was funny too because when I, I went to audition for that show, I auditioned. I went to audition for one of the daughters, and they called me back for Golda, and I, I said, "Is this a compliment or not?" <laughs> but it was <laughs> a bigger know. part, wasn't right, it? Right, but she was a much older person, <laughs> so I was okay. I'll take it. What did we do with you to make you older? <laughs> uh, makeup. I learned some makeup techniques. Did you? Yeah. yeah. And then what about your stance and your well, walking? posturing and everything, and uh, so it worked. You it also did You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. I did. And that I was a little kitty one, right? It was. I, in fact, I went from one to the other. I, I said this is like going from the ridiculous to the sublime. It was it, one minute I'm a five-year-old, and the next minute I'm Golda in, in Anna Tefka. So That's it was, so great. It was fun. And That's what about fun. Brighton Beach Memories? Brighton Beach Memoirs was um, a really nice experience. Did that at the Long Beach Playhouse, and that was a really delicious, meaty role. I, I, so in between, were mm -hmm. you doing TV then? Had you started TV at this point? Yes, also intermittently, as, as many actresses know, it's, it, most of us, it's not a constant, constant thing, but um, yes, doing commercials and TV uh. along with the theater. And, and raising a family. Oh, and you did that time. as well? Oh, yes. <laughs> I have two wonderful children. And you live out of the city. We do. Do people forget about you if you live in uh, Orange County? The, well, n no, not if you work at it. it it's, it's taken an effort. I and see. And it's a concentrated effort. That's my job, other than my wonderful family. My job is marketing myself. And, and um, that's actually one of the ways our show got started. Well, that's what our, we, we are going to talk about your show. These are the good old days. These are the, These good, old days, are the good old days. Right that's now. right. And you, you work with Robin Page. I do. Like a duo, like, like Lucy. Like, and like <laughs> Siamese twins. Do we you? can't, uh, it's just amazing. We were put together. Um, we both belong to the same synagogue. And we, our synagogue was moving into a brand new gorgeous building and they were having a dedication weekend and they needed entertainment. And so we were put together by the cantor there, and we had not- You mean not you, didn't, you didn't know each other? We did not know each other. This was total fate. Oh my it was gosh. amazing. And that night, they said, where are you guys performing? Where can we come see you? We got hired that night to do a major fundraiser. And from that, we put together a show, and coincidentally, the, um, the, one of our, the head, one of our main writers, it happens to be my mother, who worked on the dedication of the show of the temple. 
she was commissioned to do that. My mom is a, has been a professional composer, pianist um, forever. Okay. She, she wrote, I could go on and on, she wrote uh, original music for Bravo's profile documentary series on Nathan Lane, Sarah Brightman, Jackie Chan. So um, you have a really terrific person writing your music for uh, These Are the Good Old Days. The best. Anyway, so, how yeah. did, so you got together, and I think it was from your mouth to God's ear. They uh, say that so much, and it's obviously uh, true. Honestly, it's, it's almost surreal. Um, Robin and I, everybody thinks we've been together for years. Uh, we finish each other's sentences. We, we say the same things at the same time daily, daily. Do you live close to each other? We do. That's another weird thing. We, we live five minutes away. I have two children, and my youngest son is her son's age, oh. and they are best buddies now. So it's been just, it's been a real great experience. So it's more off screen than like Lucy and Ethel on screen. It's, it's both. It's both <laughs> it's because both. we have the same chemistry on as we do off. Who wrote the the skits the <laughs> because skits? they're like what several su uh, episodes right of this we have about um, mm, 13 different vignettes something like that 12 different vignettes we have an original opening song called these are the good old days which my mom wrote and then the different sketches were mainly written by her and then we tweak it. Um, Robin's sister, Francie Shapiro, is one of the writers. She wrote our menopause That's number. That's her sister? That's her sister. So it's a very family thing. It is. Every, for years, it's ironic, we talked about how much talent there is in our family and why, you know, someday we'll put it all together. Okay, so and let's happened. talk about this funny lady all over right. here. That's funny lady Robin Page. Um, she is portraying um, Dr. Shirley Von Shrink. And she's there in her Freudian slip. Oh, how <laughs> I didn't get that. And I play Miss Every Woman, who is a very, very exaggerated large woman who comes to her and sings. They sing back and forth about all the woes of sex, guilt, boy, you know, the whole gamut. Who's directing you? We are. You're directing yourselves? Yes. I always wonder why people on a, in a one-person play, of course, this is two people molded together, right. but why they don't direct themselves. And everyone says, well, you need an outside eye. Well, that's true in part. And, and sometimes we've had, like with one of the numbers, we were a little too close to it, so we got some assistance in looking at it. And we, get, we ask for opinions. What's your mother's that. name? Elaine Lang. Elaine Lang. Does she help direct it? She does the music. She plays the music. She plays the music. She, she, puts her, she gives us her input, certainly. Um, we all kind of work together. It's, it's a really well-oiled machine. And, um, they say it's a uh, hundred minutes of zany fun. It is. We have. <laughs> there is so much comedy, and this is one thing that, that we love about our show, is that today the world is scary in many ways, and um, our show is so much fun, and you laugh so much, and it's a parody on our life, and we're able to laugh at it, and it just enables you to sit back, relax, be entertained, and laugh, which is hard to find these days in theater the, and movies. This is a picture of you and Robin Page, pretty straight looking in this, right? That's Without our, any get-ups? Exactly. That's, that's one number. We don't have to wear a wig or a hat, and uh, by that time our hair is pretty smashed down. But um, that's menopause, and we talk about sagging boobs and, and too much sex and no sex, and it's, it's an all to song. All, all music, singing, all yeah, music. a lot of parodies and original music. One of the, the things, there's so many people involved, now I see family and someone makes your hats. Yes, a friend of Robin's actually made our, the, the hats we use for a sketch in No Service World, where I'm a customer service representative and I represent a cable company and a proctologist's office, and you can only imagine what the hat looks like for that. Is it, it's, is it's it like beach blanket Babylon well, was kind of? Well, yeah, it, it's in our own way. I see. We've personalized I for see. that sketch. That's the only one with wild hats. We have other crazy oh, wigs and, and costumes, but. Uh, Lisa, is that who it Lisa, is? Lisa, yes, Lisa Xarian. Um, I was reading the bios that uh, Steve Moyer, mm -hmm. the uh, public relations mm -hmm. person, put together, and it says that 
every time I read a bio, these people were doing things at the age of five. You were at five. <laughs> this one was at five. Your mother was at five. Yes. Is that a publicity stunt? No, honest to God, it's the <laughs> truth. It she can't started. Be. She started playing piano at three and a half, composing at five. I uh, did. I sang at the Playboy Club at five. Is actually. that true? I it thought is, that was honest made to God, up. No, it's true. What were you doing there? It was a fashion show, and mm. I was modeling a paper dress at the time, which, uh, as I'm told, I don't remember, was very popular. I won't say what <laughs> year it was, but I sang if I could have a paper dress that I could call my own. Oh, how cute. And, and that from ever since then? The rest is history. So I thought that this was just a big ploy. No, honestly, we all started very young, and as Robin says, we came out of the shoot singing Mammy. So. What <laughs> happens if Robin misses a line? Oh, what she do would you never do, do that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but do you play off of each other? What happens? Oh, yes. Well, we do that daily, so it's quite a natural thing. We, we, we pick up for each other, and, and uh, we're just... So it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. I, I, we're so used to, to improvising with each other uh -oh. that it's part of it's part of the whole shtick. It's is it hard to act out other people's dramas? I know that's what an actress does, but right. I mean, you um, somebody else writes it and then right. you have to act it. Well, this is our show is something that everyone can relate to. Every vignette, even though it's a bit over the top or zany in some ways, it's something everyone can relate to. Uh, including us, so whoop. so it's not. Um, no, it's not. It's it's, it's, it's easy it's, to do. And uh, and being in the Globe Theater mm -hmm. in West Hollywood, which has uh, um, so much, such a wealth of background. I oh, mean, many is, things have happened there. It's so. Um, in fact, it's ironic because before we chose our theater, we saw the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding, and loved it so much and that's where she got started at the Globe. Oh and it just, did you choose it because of that no, or were you just, it was oh so, it just happened? It was so, yeah and we had talked about the qualities of that movie and how it relates to our show because it's the same kind of wonderful entertainment that everybody loves and needs now. Things that you need today. Yeah. Well we're glad you were here. Thank you, I was thrilled Nancy, to be here. Nancy, it was Nancy Gibbs Thank and you um, these are the good old days. These are the good old days. I keep saying that. Absolutely, because these will be Yesterday's good exactly. old days. Don't go away. We'll be right back with Pixie Herms, and we have her paintings on the set. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and you're watching the Joan Quinn Profiles. I'm back with artist Pixie Herms, who was born and raised in Southern California, actually in San Diego. She graduated from Santa Monica College of Design and Art and Architecture, and she earned a BA from Regents College in New York. I've known Pixie a while. I went to her wedding to artist George Herms on the First Street Bridge. <laughs> I know she's taught at art schools in Santa Monica, Pacific Palisades, and at a gifted program in Los Angeles. But until I read your bio last <laughs> night, I didn't know that you had a life in music. Yes. 12 years yes. in rock jazz. Yes, I was in a, a group with my eight brothers and sisters. We I couldn't even musicians. believe you had eight brothers and sisters. <laughs> I still have eight, eight <laughs> brothers and sisters, actually. And So you're the ninth person. I'm the fifth. I Either mean, way. Are there are nine kids. Yes, there are nine kids. And uh -huh. what were you doing? How did this band start? Uh, my mother was a classical pianist, and my brother, my older brothers and sisters, got into music, and um, I took up trombone in the fifth grade, and um, I played trombone and flute actually in the group. Um, we started as actually we started by doing musical theater. Is that right? <laughs> My brother wrote three uh, jazz rock musicals in uh, college, in high, at the end of high school in college, and we had the Ventura County, uh, Ventura County Youth Experimental Theater. Is that and right? And I was on the executive board at 13, 
and uh, oh, so you started really young. We're getting this right into yeah. place, right? <laughs> yeah, into we were focus. real, real young, and we just got, we just did everything. We did all the, we did the music. I, <laughs> you know, we did the theater. My brother wrote the book, the music. We performed, uh, and then the the band evolved out of the road shows for the the theater group because we'd go and do road shows at all the oh, high schools and colleges and whatnot to promote the musical. Oh, I see. And then um, what was the band called? Weirs. It was called the Weirs. The mm -hmm. Weirs. Yeah. How'd you pick the name? Uh, uh, my last, my maiden name is Weir. <laughs> Ends with a Z instead of an S. Oh, but, Pixie, yeah, yeah. this is too much. The Weirs, That's I right. got it. Ooh, like yeah. the Jackson Brothers. <laughs> the Jackson. Actually, very, very similar. Were that? Were you at, at about the same time? Yes, and we there were there was a proposal for us to do a, a, a variety show like the Osmonds, but and we didn't do that though. A I mean. couple of years ago. Um, <laughs> You must have been so popular in San Diego that they took the memorabilia from the Weirs and used it at the, what, Hard Rock Cafe? They put it on display? Right, yes. It was a, a part of the um, history of San Diego music, and we were one of the groups that was very uh, popular in San Diego. We played everywhere, and um, we were on the Homegrown uh, album put on by the, uh, I believe, KGB Radio. So and you had a history. I mean, mm -hmm. this here was this group all up and down, well, basically Southern California, right? Right. And uh, a history as a family rock and roll performing, performance yes. people. Yes, we, we did, uh, uh, we played everywhere. We worked constantly. Were they, are they still in music? Uh, I have one brother, uh, Tom Weir, who has a recording studio in the Valley. I have another brother, Michael Damien, who is an, who is an actor, writer, uh, director and has a uh, uh, does albums still. My he sister, sings. He sings. Yes, very good singer. Had a he had a number one single, "Rock On," a few, few years ago, a number of years ago. And I have a younger sister, Teresa, uh, who uh, works under the name Tracy Barnes, is a country singer. And my elder sister, Maria. Uh, uh, plays bass in, in groups all, all around town. <laughs> Stand up bass? Upright bass, yes, and uh, and I believe electric also. And then my eldest brother Larry has a music magazine. I can't believe it. I, I'm like, I know you, I know you're an artist, but you are an artist in a different field too. Did you ever think you'd continue with music? Or why did art, uh, visual arts come into your life? That's a, a very interesting situation. We were playing in Hermosa Beach at a club called Shenanigans. And um, we were uh, a wonderful blues uh, guitarist named uh, Robin Ford was sitting in with our group and we were at a break and he sat at the table and said that whenever he felt happy or sad, he played his guitar. And I thought, well, I don't feel that way about music. It was, it was work. Oh. It was what we did for, I went to work. And I thought, well, whenever I have an emotional reaction, I uh, paint and write poetry. And I quit actually two months after that. Is that I right? literally uh, put my instruments away and never played again. But you were still pretty young because you've been an artist for 20 years now. Right. I was about uh, 25 you were, Yeah, but you'd already had a full career. Right. I'd already been working since <laughs> I was like a little kid. <laughs> you had a full career. Yeah. One thing, um, Pixie, you're not exactly short and tiny like a Pixie. You're pretty tall. That's my dad. Yeah. He called you Pixie? Well, I was born on Christmas, and he named me after elves that helped Santa. And he... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, I, in Ireland, they're called pixies. So um, I w I, I was, it's stuck, and it's it's kind of um, the litmus test. If if you can get past my name, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, so we've got you having this epiphany. You're going to stop. You want to yeah. be happy, I am, and art makes you happy. Well, I realized I'd never chosen my profession. I'd oh, never chosen it. Oh, you were thrown in. I, I, it was going into the family business. Like if they made shoes, you know, you just everyone's making shoes, and all of a sudden one day I realized I had never made a choice to go into music. I just fell into music, and I was technically proficient. I studied with great uh, teachers. I read in three clefs. I, you know, had. Uh, Could you, you know, compose? No, I was you not. I life. was not really. That's why you know I didn't have the freedom I have in art. And the minute I started studying visual arts, I mean, I should not say art because, because music is, is an art. Yeah, that's why I said <laughs> you know, so into the visual arts. Visual right? art, yes. Uh, but the minute that I started studying uh, the visual arts, and, and I knew immediately that that was a completely intuitive 
uh, drive because even when we were on the road, I used to do paintings with fingernail polish because that's all we had, you know? <laughs> like we just had stuff to go on stage and I would do little paintings with makeup and fingernail polish. I mean, I was that obsessive at that age. You've had exhibitions all over the uh, all over the states but basically a lot of art exhibitions in California right and how did you get to that point where did we go once you decided you were going to be in art did you go to Santa Monica College or well no you... I started out at LA Valley I studied with uh, some really marvelous teachers at, at the at the community college level including Sam Gofredo in drawing Michael Wingo and Caroline Blake in painting um, and I eventually studied with Michael Wingo in, as, a, as a, my painting instructor privately as well. I see. So you got right into it immediately. You went right to art class. Well, he actually caught me. I, w I wasn't quite sure where I was going I as far as my focus in the visual arts. I, I was thinking ceramics because I'm very oh, tactile. Oh. And he saw what I was doing in a design class and said, you know, you have to take painting. I don't, you know, and I immediately started focusing on my painting aspect. So that's what I was going to ask you. That's your favorite medium, obviously. Yeah, I love oil painting. I see. And um, you're teaching. Do you teach oil painting? Not really. Uh, well, I've been teaching a lot of um, uh, schools. I haven't been really teaching, uh, uh, well, privately I teach oil painting. I'm not teaching oil painting in the, the uh, uh, school system where I'm teaching younger kids because of the health risks. Oh, oh, but oh. I'm teaching privately um, uh, oil painting to, I have some private students, but Is I don't right? teach publicly. You, you also give some workshops. Mm -hmm. And those are drawing workshops. Right. How, how does that work? What range of age what any age um, I the drawing workshops I'm doing right now I don't recommend too young of children because they might become bored um, but uh, it's it's focused more towards uh, teenage and adult oh, it is. And up you teach them in your studio downtown? I at, teach at, at my studio and at a, ver at a west side location as well. Mm -hmm. Talking about what you've done you did some murals mm -hmm. this is a mural where Oh, this is at, uh, I'm sorry, I just <laughs> oh, went yes. there. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, this is down in uh, the Flower District in downtown Los Angeles. And uh, this is a 700 square foot mural and it's acrylic. This is just a part of it, right? That's a, a, a close up, yes. I'm going to show you the whole thing because it gives you more of a, the length of what it is. And, yeah. and this was a commission. How did you get this commission? Um, this was a commission from the flower growers in that area, uh, the uh, people who actually grow the flowers and, um, and have the market there. You teach your children mural making, I think. At Marquez School, have well, they done murals or worked with you? Yes, I, I was teaching last year at Marquez Charter School in the Palisades, but uh, recently I've been working more with the Accelerated School. And this school is uh, in uh, near downtown Los Angeles, a little closer to where I live. And uh, we just did uh, five murals with the eighth, seventh, eighth grade. And we also did a series of two, two other murals in the last two years. So, so because you've done these murals, you really know how to teach them how to lay things out and how to work right. things. Does it become mathematical? Um, mural making is a technical experience as well as a creative experience. You do have to transfer an image uh, unless you're doing a mural where you don't pre-plan. I see. And I, I don't know too many murals that are going to go up that way That's without right. planning. So. Tell us uh, about this piece that you brought in. Oh, this is a, a lino cut, uh, linoleum block carving. And um, uh, this is a, a, a part of a series of linoleum block carvings that I also made cards out of, artist note cards out of them. And the, the prints actually are made by George, my husband, on his press, a press that he's printed a lot of poetry on and oh. it has a lot of, um, uh, of a great history uh, called the Love Press. I know the Love Press. Yeah. I saw the Love Press 25 years ago. Yeah, it's been around this, this for a while. Is, these are your cards. I mean, mm -hmm. these are depictions of some of your artist cards, right. but you can uh, explain the top row. Uh, can I explain them? Mm -hmm. uh, Are I, you just drawing, just your... Well, the, the whole series is based on communication, actually. Mm. And uh, they also came uh, 
the source of these cards came from a series of banners I did for the city of Santa Monica. Well, I was going to ask you about the, the banners. So the banners look like these cards? They were the beginning. They, the, the cards have now moved uh, away, but they're kind of like the grandfather of these cards. Uh, but the cards started to focus also more on um, uh, communication and what one does when one sends a card and how uh, one is uh, reaching or connecting I'll to show, another person. I'll show the exact, it opens up, so it's like, um, this is the full size right. of this. And then, and, and there's nothing inside. <laughs> that's where we write our poetry. <laughs> that's right, that's right. That's where you poets go at it. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit about the banner project. Is it actually Christmas banners or is it just the city of Santa Monica? I know Laddie Dill was instrumental right. in uh, working on that project. Well, he started that project <laughs> when I was uh, just graduating or ju just had just graduated from the Santa Monica College of Design, Art, and Architecture, which is a very long name. Which is, um, is yeah. It's no longer with us. It's no longer with us, but it was a college that was, that handpicked the students that came, and you yeah. worked one-on-one -on -one with y the artist, right? Yes, and it and was who a did studio you work with? mentor school. Well, I worked with Laddie. I worked with um, uh, Deborah Sussman in design. Oh, she's great. You know, um, there were there was Peter Alexander in painting. So you worked with each one of those artists who are working, uh, well-known people in their field, yes. just on a small, close basis. Right, and we had our own studios, and that was the magic of it because we not only worked with these marvelous people but the students uh, got to interact in a way that you just don't, that just doesn't happen if you're in a classroom as opposed to being in a studio. It was a very magical place. It was like a salon in a way, yeah. wasn't it? It All was the fabulous. Time. And I know Laddie was very, uh, worked a lot with the city of Santa Monica and he got that poster project he going. He started with the banners and I did 36 uh, banners for the first group and, uh, and I think they're up to four, over 450 now. They're oh, all they hand painted. Oh, oh, they are? They're all hand painted, every one of them. Y you're very, <laughs> very versatile. You did this label <laughs> yeah. for a cake company. Right, yeah. Yeah, I was hired by, actually, um, this is uh, Randy Waldenville, uh, who started uh, making these tea cakes, and he called me. They and, smell delicious. Oh, they are marvelous. <laughs> and he uh, wanted uh, something really magical and special for um, something that was very important to him. He started this company of, of making a recipe that was very important to him. and. And that's a little gouache painting. And you did the, that's so yeah, great. Little, little. I'm so glad you got to come on the show today. Well, I'm pleased to be here. I, we've learned so much about Pixie Herms <laughs> that now we can really delve into her. All of your paintings are on the set. Yeah. And you made the frames and you painted the outsides of the frames to reflect the work inside. That's and thank right. you. You're welcome. And thank you for watching the Joan Quinn Profiles. We'll see you next time. Keep writing to 777 South Figueroa. 44th floor, 917.